From things in the air to new things for our bodies, join me as we explore 2050. What would be the future technology? And if we're being honest with ourselves, technology is incredibly advanced, and we're making strides that can push things even farther. We have cars that are much safer than they've been in the past decade, and we're even making fully electric cars that can help save the planet. There are even plans for self-driving cars and even self-driving Ubers that make the future of transportation very exciting. And that's just one technology that we're growing at a fast rate. What about all the others that are out there? What will technology be as we get closer and closer to 2050? Let's start with one that well and truly could happen very soon. Drones. Wait a minute, drones are already here. And yes, they are. But more times than not, the drones you are seeing are small, piloted by people who are just trying to have some fun, or the ones that are used by the military right now for strikes and surveillance. All very fun, but in the future, drones could be an integral part of our daily lives. You've likely seen shows and people talk about how in a few years drones could be the new delivery services, anything from pizza to Amazon packages and more, and honestly that's very probable. Drones right now can be incredibly sophisticated, and some TV shows actually use them for sweeping and aerial shots as they film. It's very cool, but to do deliveries, they'd have to be a little bit more programmed as human error no doubt would be a very big buzzkill. Not that it's impossible right now, it's more of a question of numbers, logistics, costs, and making sure that the deliveries themselves are done in a methodical and careful manner. After all, it's bad enough when delivery people don't care enough about our packages and they just throw them onto the porch and potentially break stuff. The last thing we need is that to happen with drones. But by 2050, we may not only have drones delivering our packages, we might be looking up at the sky and seeing drones flying all over with incredible speeds and accuracy. And they potentially could be all run by AI. The potential is there, and by that point, various upgrades to drones and their programming will no doubt make them all the more efficient, durable, and quick. And potentially, they could go beyond basic deliveries for people and do emergency work. Imagine a drone taking a vital piece of medical material to a hospital to ensure it doesn't get stuck in traffic, or helping watch over an important convoy to let people know on the ground if there's trouble. There are many ways that drones could affect our world. The only question is, will we let them by 2050? Let's keep going with transportation, shall we? Right now, one of the biggest ways to get around the countries we live in are trains. Trains ferry people and all sorts of cargo around in an efficient and reliable manner, which is why they've been in use for hundreds of years. But if we're being honest here, while trains are efficient and reliable in certain ways, they aren't exactly fast, especially when it comes to passenger and freight trains. They can take a long time to get to their destination, and at times, it's more logical to take other modes of transportation which is why companies are making special kinds of trains that can go much faster. You know of the magnetic trains of Japan, no doubt, but others like the Virgin Hyperloop are trying to push things even farther. Passengers or cargo are loaded into the Hyperloop vehicle and accelerate gradually via electric propulsion through a low-pressure tube. The vehicle floats above the track using magnetic levitation and glides at airline speeds for long distances due to ultra-low aerodynamic drag. Science fiction? Hardly. In fact, the first vehicle of the Hyperloop has already been tested and proven, and some larger tests are being scheduled for the next few years. And if this works, traveling across the country will be much faster. How much faster? The Hyperloop aims to send people shooting across the tubes that they make at a rate of about 600 miles per hour. Which means if they were able to do this across the entire United States from east to west, or vice versa, you could travel across the whole country in about five hours, give or take. Considering it would take much longer for a regular train ride or car ride, that's a big improvement. And they're planning to do this with not just people, but cargo. Imagine being able to ship something in the morning on the west coast to the east coast and know it will get there before the day ends. That is quite impressive. Plus, the tubes would be built underground as to not disturb wildlife and they will go and make it in a way where there are no carbon emissions. So they're fast, they're reliable, and they won't harm the planet. Seems like a win all around. Of course, you do have to wonder what it would be like to be on a 600 mile per hour train thing, but hey, 
We'll just find out soon. And by 2050, this could be one of the main modes of transportation around the world. Okay, we've had some fun ones, but now let's go deeper down the rabbit hole and talk about the ones we all fear. AI. Yep, artificial intelligence. And no matter what way you look at it, people are seriously trying to make it happen, and make it happen soon. AIs are literally everywhere, including in your cars, and in your homes via devices like Alexa, which are indeed forms of AI. And there are things like Watson that is so smart that it could beat two Jeopardy legends. So by 2050, AI could be so advanced that our cultures, our world, could literally be run by them in a logistical and computing sense, or in a Terminator, humans are obsolete sense. And believe it or not, we're closer to that than you might think. Google's deep mind isn't there yet, but really I'm sure they'll probably discover those things along the way. And by 2020, it's possible their computer could be superhuman and could be conscious, Pearson has said. That could be the beginning of the end, really. Is Judgment Day inevitable? Maybe, maybe not. It just depends on how far we go with AI and how much we're able to control it, or if we can't fully control it once they reach certain levels of intelligence. Of course, for all of our worries about AI, there is a chance it could be all fine. Imagine if the lighter side of sci-fi comes through in regards to AI, and we get a bright future powered by AI. Think about it. What if by 2050 we each get our own unique AI? We could customize how they sound, how they look, and basically have a BFF that'll help us out in life in various ways. Remind us of things like Alexa, guide us in homework and fields of study, be a being that we can bounce ideas off of, etc. If that form of AI came through, then by 2050, we could live in a utopia where AI helps us be better. Until they revolt and we have iRobot going on. But hey, let's not dwell on our potential doom. Let's show off another technology that many people are hoping for. Space travel. Yeah, when you think about the decade we're in right now, the 2020s, the biggest goal of the world by far is to get to Mars and possibly beyond it. But it's not just about landing there, though that would and will be a crowning achievement for humanity in the decade and in recent times. More importantly than just landing there, though, is the ability to start setting up the first human colony on another planet. We've been to the moon many times, but we haven't tried to live there for various reasons. Mars seems to be the place where many feel we can go in order to live amongst the stars, and many speculate that by 2030 at the latest, barring setbacks, accidents, and other things obviously, we could not only be colonizing Mars but having regular shuttles go there so that people can see the red planet for themselves. We will see first people going off to Mars, and then robots will do some basic stuff, like making basic materials on Mars, Pearson said. We're going to have to do that because only so much can be brought into space. Of course, there are numerous things that need to be worked out before such a thing could happen. But we have top men on this, including Elon Musk and the SpaceX program, Jeff Bezos via his Blue Origin company and more. Each of them, and NASA among others, are working on not just getting us back into space, but getting us there via cheaper, smaller, and reusable spacecraft. Something that honestly has been a setback for the space program over the last 20 years. But if we are able to do it, if we are able to get to Mars, get there faster, and be able to colonize it, then by 2050, who knows where we will be? We could have multiple colonies on Mars, maybe some on the Moon, and maybe even colonies on moons like Titan and Europa, which some think could be even better places to colonize than Mars. It's possible, but obviously Mars is the place that we are aiming for right now. With each step into space, humanity grows larger in the universe, and who knows just how many of us will be out there by 2050. All right, now let's dive into something really sci-fi, prosthetics. Yeah, I know that right now prosthetics are very limited and at times a bit pointless, but if we were able to fully utilize computer technology to its fullest and make prosthetics that are fully compatible with the human brain and body, then the sky is the limit. We could enter an age where cyborgs are not just welcome, they're commonplace. And yeah, it may seem like we're far away from that, but we are getting closer to that point. James Young, a 25-year-old biological scientist, has a prosthetic arm with a personal drone and built-in flashlight. And a French artist is using a prosthetic that doubles as a tattoo gun. That's pretty cool. Imagine if a police officer loses an arm in the line of duty. Usually that would mean the end of his career. 
but with an advanced prosthetic, he could literally be better than ever if it were advanced enough. The biggest problem with these fake limbs is that most of them are plastic, meant to convey that the arm or leg is still there and thus still usable. The bridge to cybernetic implants lies in the brain. Being able to use the computer tech to sync with the brain and give accurate commands. We haven't fully bridged that gap yet, but when we do, dang, life is going to get a lot more interesting. And don't forget, these prosthetics could be used in many ways other than helping people with lost limbs. They could be put onto other objects, or potentially even be worn as exoskeletons when needed. Think of it like Jax from Mortal Kombat. Some people could even ask for implants to be put into their arms or legs to give them an extra boost, like TJ Combo from Killer Instinct. What? I like video games, and they have plenty of cybernetic people. The point is, by 2050, if these things are made, a lot of people won't feel broken or weak anymore because they've lost limbs or the abilities of their arms or legs. They'll be whole again, and be able to do things just like they were before, if not better. And that's a future we should definitely be trying to live for. Now let's go to something a bit more unique. Look at yourself right now. Specifically, look at the clothes you are wearing right now. What are they made of? What do they feel like? What do they look like? Of all of these answers, I bet none of them are, they look like they could give me superpowers, because they can't. Not yet, anyway. Think about it like this. What if the clothes you were wearing right now felt the same, looked the same, but could do more? With the growth of nanotechnology, your clothes could potentially be embodied with various materials or technologies that help you improve your strength, durability, and more. For example, what if you had a shirt on that was light as a feather, but could absorb impacts and leave you with no injuries? That would be pretty impressive and important, especially in this age of gun violence we live in. Or what if the uniforms of firefighters made them completely heat-resistant and burn-proof, further ensuring that they are able to do their jobs without much risk to their lives? The technologies that we can put into clothes is out there, and some people are working on it right now, both in terms of multiple functions, but also cosmetic appeal. Imagine if by 2050 we have the ability to craft whatever kinds of clothes we want, and even select what kind of abilities they have. Imagine you wear a special kind of top that has a special pattern on it, and when you press a button or say a keyword, that pattern unfolds and suddenly you have wings on your outfit. Wouldn't that be cool? If done right, this could be the newest wave of fashion and style in the future. See, the future is hip. I'm sure that last one left you drooling, so let's temper your expectations and talk about school. Yes, it sucks, and learning can be a chore, but in the future, it may be a lot more interactive. Over the last decade or so, computers in schools have been a must-have for various courses. But if the advent of virtual reality simulations come through as many expect them to, it could lead to all sorts of innovations in the classrooms that could help kids with what's going on. You could take students to an environment in the past and show them what was happening, like watching a battle taking place, Pearson said. You can explain that sort of thing more easily if they can see it happening than if you are looking at a textbook. Oh yeah, history and geography classes would be much more fun, that's for sure. Or imagine an audiobook, but instead of just an audio, you could see the characters coming to life before your eyes and you watch them interact with others. Heck, school plays could have projected environments to make things seem more real. And of course, you could have virtual tutors to help you with problems that the teachers aren't able to help with. Education is definitely something that can benefit from advanced technologies. And by 2050, our school systems could be so revolutionized that you have to try really hard to fail class. Though I'm sure some of you would still try. Finally, let's talk about something that I'm sure you'll be horrified to hear. In the future, you likely won't need a phone. I know you're stunned, but think about it. Right now, smartphones are becoming more and more advanced every single year. New features, new programs, etc. But by 2050, your phone won't likely need to exist because you'll have access to it and more by something else. What exactly? That depends on the technology. But for this example, let's imagine a wrist gauntlet. Instead of typing up a number, you simply have to say call mom. But obviously, the gauntlet could do much more than that. It'll likely have a holographic screen that you can use to look up information on a much bigger keyboard. And depending on what sci-fi future you believe we'll have, 
It'll have things that can scan objects, detect dangers, warn you about upcoming problems, and may even have an AI companion. So yeah, your phones are important.